so I get the first question. I want to I want to know how does this compare to something like EC2 or Rackspace Cloud, where I've got an environment where I can run a bunch of servers in the cloud. So EC2, for example, is an infrastructure as a service. They're selling you this uh, this time on these CPU machines. We're really selling a platform where people have hardware, and it's kind of like an EC2 on steroids because you get this whole new paradigm with it. Right? It's a it's a serious value add, especially for for areas like HPC, where you can instantly and easily map this onto an HPC paradigm, like that grid thing that I that I showed. Uh, it's basically a replacement for grid queuing engines like Sun Grid Engine and these things you just submit to this uh, this cluster as a queue of jobs. But you don't have to worry about the environment anymore. You just submit it and clone it for every single job. What's the uh, what's the pricing model like as a user of your service? Uh, so. We're still working that out. The platform is going to go into beta sometime this month, so it's not publicly available yet. We, I'd be happy to chat afterwards if you want to go with that. Okay, Let's turn it over to the audience. Chris, uh, Okay, so can this be overlaid onto the cloud? Or a cloud, do you have to have hardware? Uh, yeah, it's sort of a bare metal uh, level platform, so uh, you, you have to have hardware. What's your minimum hardware requirement? x86 processors. One or well, you can have a cluster of one, and you can have a few virtual machines on it, but uh, I mean, it, you just won't be able to accomplish as much work. Right? You're able to oversubscribe the the cluster based on you know um, whatever level you want to tolerate. So it's kind of you have eight gigabytes of RAM in this one machine. You want to create sixteen virtual machines with five hundred twelve megabytes of RAM. That's totally fine. Actually, so I created like 11 or 12 virtual machines in total, that's it. It was just on two physical nodes, our, our demo clusters, just two kind of beefy nodes. Yeah, oh, yeah. sorry, I don't know what to <laughs> Okay, so I'm, still, I'm a little bit confused about what you guys are providing. Like, did you actually write a hypervisor, or, you, or do you have tools that run on top of something like Xen? So it's based on, it's based on Xen, it's modifications to Xen. Uh, there's an open source component, and then there's our control stack, which is kind of needed to make the whole thing go. Uh, there's a lot of orchestration that has to happen within that control stack, but fundamentally it's, it's the end case. That's a great question. I didn't expect a hypervisor question, so that's great. So you're selling to people who already have a data center, right? Uh, who already have hardware for now, yeah. Or looking to buy hardware. So, um, so I've got a bunch of hardware. Most people have existing applications on them. Are you expecting, or you assuming they're going to migrate their applications to your platform, or do you see this as for new applications and the old stuff will still run on whatever they've got today? So it's pretty easy to migrate to a virtual cluster system. That's that's really one of the big wins, right? Typically, you have like a a head node for your cluster which has the bless image on it, and you can take that image, put it as the virtual head node, and then kind of create the worker nodes on the fly. Or just provision that virtual cluster, keep it at 20 nodes, and you have the same as your old cluster in the cloud. And you don't have to do any. The migration is really trivial. Okay, we got one more question up there. Can you talk a little bit more about the API for software developers if they want to clone off their application, fork it, if you will, and then reintegrate the data smoothly so that they don't have this whole big mess at the end? Is it shell scripts or something more than that? Oh no, so the API is whatever kind of language bindings you want. We've got, right now it's, it's C bindings, we have the shell tool, uh, Python bindings and Java bindings. It basically gives you Unix-like semantics, so fork, and then all the clones are transient, they write to their own memory state, nothing changes in the master. But you can also list what clones you have, you can kill them, you can do like join, wait for flow control. It, it's kind of like Unix in the cloud, and I really don't want to say that because it makes it sound like a super nerd product, right? <laughs> it, it's really... It's there are a lot of super nerds in this room. There's nothing wrong with super nerd products. <laughs> Unix in the cloud, but that's not <laughs> the tagline. It gives you a, it gives you a very uh, accessible model because if you program Unix, you know the model. All right. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you.